do you need me to find like a nugget or something? And maybe you get like you you touch just, a nugget or something. And you then, just need to check me in to check me into that anti nugget place. I man. can't. I don't know if that exists. I can't find a nugget, so I guess you're out of luck. Nugget. Nugget. Is it contagious? <laughs> I poured a fizzy beverage into my cup and I could hear it. The fizzy beverage. <laughs> I got more information for you. Speaking of more, welcome to Good Mythical More. Uh, before before you do this. Okay, before I do it. I'm gonna make a, a Good Mythical More exclusive plug here. Um, we've talked about lynda.com before. If you wanna uh, help support the show and this experience over here at Good Mythical More, uh, go to lynda.com slash more and we've got a deal for you. What's what's the deal? The deal is free ten day trial. Free ten day trial. Um, this is you know this is for Linda is a place where you can learn anything that you want to learn via uh, video tutorials. Uh, very standardized by people who know what they're high, talking. High about. quality stuff. Um, and I'm excited to promote it because I've used it. I remember that there was a the, t- there was a time the uh, previous when well, was that? It, well, the first time was a few years ago. Um, I learned. You needed to learn something. I learned a new version of Logic, which we use to uh, record and edit right, our music. Right. Our music. Um, and there's a new version of Logic out, so I'm going back to Linda. I'm looking at it right now. To uh, I'm coming back to you, Linda. Linda's always there. Hey, Linda. I'm coming back. I like to the you. name Linda. I'm trying to on a woman. Just uh, rekindle or a website. Rekindle our old flame, so I can learn some Logic X. Me, you, and Logic X. So anyway, like Link said, this is a great way to support the show and get uh, an exclusive offer over there. Uh, Lynda.com slash more. For, free for 10 days. Uh, learn whatever you wanna learn. You don't have to learn Logic. Just browse the library and learn some stuff. Audio, music, business, CAD, design, development. I could keep reading, but you get the idea. And speaking of learning, I'm going to learn you some more about driverless cars because I actually just had so much more information that I could have gotten into. Um, Lay it on me. I do want to say, first of all, that that Mercedes, man. I mean, the Google one is like pretty cool, but the $10 million one. It looked like a private jet inside. I've never been in a private jet, but I've I've seen pictures of them, and it kind of felt like that. Like there were there were seats facing each other. It's like riding in a train that's a car. You know what I mean? Like it'll be like who's got the nicest train car? The, the, The thing that the assumptions that I brought to the driverless car. Uh, scenario were that they were connected by some network they, so that so that you would so that you would like as you drove on like the interstate you would plug into a network of cars so they're all moving like a train well, is that part of it uh, that is absolutely part of it and absolutely inevitable so but but are they going to have spe- special different roads for driverless cars because are they do they have where they have data on every driver? Well, that well, that's an interesting car. thing. I, I definitely think that there is going to come a time, and this is not based on the research necessarily. This is, it might be in the research somewhere, but it's just based on conjecture and kind of common sense. I think that there will definitely be a time in which the major highways, you'll once you get onto the major highways, you you're driverless. In fact, it will be illegal for you for, like, this automatically. Is this is my theory you will automatically tap into the flow of traffic. And yes, okay, so you know how like when you're at a, dry, a, a light or there's they're stop and go traffic, all this stuff that humans do because they have this reaction time. Like when the yeah. light turns green, technically everyone could accelerate at the exact same pace but it, and but all it, go at the same time. But you, you studied traffic, like literally you studied, you took a course in traffic, traffic in college, engineering, right? Yes. And so it operates as a wave, like mathematically, People behave. This person reacts. This like per, this an, person's not reacting. Honk honk. You know, like pe- an ocean wave. People like there's a, make a mistakes. Building. And people, you know, obviously computers will make mistakes too. And people will hold those computers much more accountable than they hold a human. But the, without a doubt, they will be communicating to one another and probably some sort of network that not only is like an internet-based thing, but something that's in, potentially in the road itself. But then when they get off and they're interacting with people who I think will probably always have cars that can be driven by people because there's gonna be different parts of, there's gonna be people who just will not give up the right to control their car. Because I mean, if you think about it, it's like, okay, what if worst case scenario, we're all in a car that is controlled by some grid and then some 
body hacks that grid or the government decides that they want everyone to go to Washington DC at the same time or something, you know, not that that would happen necessarily. Or a concert. But the principle like of- Like Kenny Chesney wants everybody to come to his concert. Kenny Chesney hacks it and everybody in the world shows up at right. his concert. Right, Where are they gonna park? I don't know. You can't, you can't. And Kenny Chesney to, is known have to, for that kind of shenanigans. You'd have to park yourself once you got to the stadium because it still wouldn't know how to right. navigate the So mile. I don't think we'll ever get rid of that, but I do strongly believe that there will be sections of road where it's illegal to not be in the driverless mode. And when you strongly believe something, it, 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 it means it will, it will one day it. happen. That's how it works. What's the first thing you're gonna do when you get behind the non-wheel of a driverless car? Take a nap. You're going, yeah, I'll be so excited I won't be able to take a nap. Oh, so I'll, be I'll be excited those, for 30 minutes I'll so. be pushing those bubbles in the console. Well, you probably won't get that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll be in the, we'll be in the little egg. We'll be in it. We'll be in it together, and and like four other people because we will have bought a ticket to it. It won't even be our car. I'll have to sit in your lap. Uh, this is an interesting statistic that I that, that the Pew Research Made Center uh, came out with in February of 2014. The public wants autonomous robotic driverless cars even more than brain implants or cloned meat. <laughs> yeah, they do. I didn't know anybody wanted brain implants and cloned meat. Uh, well. I don't know what to say to that. I get I get a brain implant, some some potted meat. What's it called? Potted meat, cloned meat. Cloned. Potted meat is a different thing. Potted nobody meat is wants spam. to clone. And but, I would I want to do all three at once is what I was trying to say. You could have potted meat and cloned meat in your driverless car. But okay, and an so, implant. But there's a certain amount of pride. <laughs> Uh, pride, a brain implant. When you're when you're uh, <laughs> when you're driving a car, think about this for a second. So there's like, you take pride in like how you can operate a vehicle. Yeah, you know, I can parallel park with the best of them. That whole element of the driving experience will be lost in the driverless society. It'll be like I can sit in this car better than you, or what? Like what? What, what can you? What do you have to be proud about other than just the car? Like I, I paid for this car and it has a cooler of, touch screen than yours. I, I think that very quickly there will be exercise machines in cars and and uh, cars will get taller so that people <laughs> Look at that guy. So that people can, they'll be running on treadmills in driverless cars. This is a great idea. And they'll be looking at the Titanic right there in front of them <laughs> while they're doing it. The Titanic, the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're only gonna play right. The so, so what will happen first is that the hoods will be short, and you'll have to lay down. You can only do like yoga moves that, like, where you're down on a mat, or you could swim. Like, if you had like one of those, uh, you know, you have one of those lap pools that, like, the water gushes out, and you're swimming but you're not moving. There'll be one of those in a driverless car, and a then lap they'll say, pool? "I doubt it." Not a lap pool, but a. An endless pool. An endless pool. I know what you're talking about. Will be, that won't be in there. Will be, <laughs> will be in there. <laughs> I'm pretty safe. And I'm then they'll say, that. you know what, why don't we just put a treadmill in here and you'll stand up treadmill and you'll run. Treadmill will be before the pool. You'll run. I <laughs> no, think the treadmill no, it won't because the, it won't be, it, you, can't, you don't have to stand up when swimming. I think it's gonna change uh, people's commute. Like, people won't think about their commute anymore because they'll be like, I work the whole time. In fact, some people's job will just be in the car working. I, where do you, where's your commute? I just drive around every day. Think, think about it, you'll be like, I'm gonna do all my phone calls and have all my meetings and do all my emails in the car and so people will start living like two hours away from You know what the first work. driverless cars will be? What? They'll be taxis, they will be Uber or Lyfts. Cause people can't, they cost too much to purchase so people will, yeah. it will be, Oh, you know what? I want to pay eighty-five dollars to go to the taco stand in the driverless car, and it'll come pick you up. But you know what? That's going to happen then. Most, a lot of people, except for the very rich, will just pay people. a fee. Pay a fee to be a part to have a share of uh, a car, like the way they do the like ride sharing. It's going to be like ride sharing. I got to like schedule, and then you'll just like type it in, make a request, and then it'll come pick you up and take you to where you want to go. No, and no, no. Only it'll, some it'll, people like who are really rich will own their own driverless car. No, I, I think it'll just be like Uber. Yeah, but that's but think about it. If all I got to do is like tap a little app and the car comes and picks me up, why do I need to drive anymore? But why does that mean you're going to share with somebody? Like, well, then, why do you need to drive now? Then, if that's the 
philosophy. No, because think about it. Because when you when, think about it, when you drive, when you drive, you're you're exerting it. it, it you're you're exerting something. You, you, it takes some sort of effort. But calories. If, if the car is totally responsible for itself, like it's going to take care of getting gas. It's going to do everything that it can. It can be operating at all times and just based on demand, they'll just send driverless cars out to people. I think it's gonna happen because the, the autonomy. I agree, the, that's, the that's autonomy. how it's going to happen. So yeah, people want, people who would have bought a car will say, I don't need a car, I use the driverless Uber. And why does ride sharing, why is ride sharing not caught on so far? Because the person has to bring you the car and then they have to get somebody to take them back to their house. But if the car can drive to your house, so many people will do drive sharing because it'll just be like, I used the car, it just showed up at my house, I got in it, and then it, and then I got through. Did I have to worry about, do I have to take this back to this dude's house? No, I just get out of the car, say I'm home, and the car just yeah. drives to the next it person. It knows you're home. It took you. You don't even have to say that, right. But no, I, I, I feel strongly about this. It's a very different thing than driving yourself, and it will lead to a, a smaller, small percentage of people actually owning it. I don't know what you mean by ride share. That's the part I don't understand. Okay, so it, currently in in the world right now, there's a thing called a ride share where somebody has a car and they say, I have a car and you can go on a website. And use it? And use it and be like, I want this car from Tuesday to Friday. Your car, and, and if you're like, I don't need it from then, I'm gonna be out of town or whatever. If the cars are in control of where they are and when they need to be there, it makes ride sharing so easy. I know, but why not just do like, Uber. And it's so much more efficient. Than Uber? It would be Uber, but it would be driverless cars. The ride That's share, what I'm saying. Yeah, but no one would, to, I don't own any of the car. I'm saying I would not own a car. I would just use a service. So you're agreeing with me. And so, yeah, we're not disagreeing. Because the difference is, is that right now, what's my car doing? It's just sitting out there, not being used. That's inefficient. It should be driving someone else who needs it right now. And there will be that many less cars. It's inevitable it's gonna happen. So why doesn't everyone sell their car and just use Uber, except for the Uber driver? Because there's not enough and it's too expensive. So it'll be really cheap. When it becomes affordable mm. and the technology is there, so many people. I, no, what I'm saying, it, it will, the first way that you will ride in it will be through Uber and it will be a novelty and you'll pay out the nose for it. But then the second wave will be people selling their cars and just saying, I'm gonna use this service. Second as, wave is driverless cars. all Ubers will become driverless cars and then the, then the third wave and fourth wave, I don't know what those will be, but the fifth wave will be people will sell their car and just use Uber. That, without a doubt. Definitely. You watch this back in 2045. You'd be like, man, that's right. I don't own a car now. That's weird.